the Sonoran Food Hub will allow the farmers to spend 100% of their time actually on the farm, getting more produce out of the land. And from this, we can take that excess produce that they would not produce and get to market quicker and faster and make more profit for them. Good evening, everybody. Maybe not. Uh, so we know these guys, right? These are our local farming heroes. You see them at farmer's markets. You see them in your local stores. You eat the things they produce. They're living this romantic agrarian life that we all love to talk about. But there's something that we don't often see at market. And that's that a lot of our local and small producers make on average $10,000 a year in income. Now, there's something else that a lot of people don't know, and that's that Tucson is the eighth poorest city of its size in the United States. And Southern Arizona spends $630 million a year buying food from outside the state that could be grown by our local farmers. So what's the problem? Oh. Uh, my name is Chris Mazzarella, and I'm with the Sonoran Food Hub. <laughs> um, so our problem is this. On one end of the value chain, we've got farmers, artisans, and producers. On the other end, we've got restaurants, markets, institutions, and schools. So for everybody to go off farm and start marketing to everybody that they want to sell to takes up a lot of time. It takes up a lot of resources. And on the other end, the restaurants, the schools, the markets, what they've become used to is calling one person to get everything they need. So they call the US Foods, they call us Cisco Systems. This creates barriers in the local food system. So it stymies access to larger markets for farmers. It keeps revenue small on the farm. And there's no job growth in this kind of system. So our solution is the Sonoran Food Hub. We take what farmers, producers, and artisans are putting together and we aggregate that in a central facility. And through our distribution services, bring that to the restaurants, the markets, and all those other people. Think of us as the Amazon of local foods or the Cisco or US food systems of local food. Some of the other services that we'll offer will be crop production services and coordination, uh, an online inventory and ordering platform, and education and outreach in the community. So our priorities now to move in on some of that $630 million and keep it in southern Arizona. So to keep those dollars local. By year five, based on the number of hubs throughout the nation that are doing this, we feel like we can move in on $9 million a year. And by year 10, we're looking at 16 to $22 million a year out of that $630 million. Uh, this translates into more jobs, more capacity for more jobs here in southern Arizona. And the most important priority is that this is greater access to low-income communities so that they can have fresh, local, healthy produce. So I work for the Community Food Bank. And when we started this journey, we started with Thrive to really bring an entrepreneurial spirit and entrepreneurial skills into the food bank and some of its programs. The team as it consists now is myself, Chris Mazzarella, Michael McDonald, the CEO of the Community Food Bank, Meryl Eisenberg, who's our anthropologist, Jaron Keen with Plant-Based Nation. We've got Steve Fesch, who's a fifth generation farmer, and Trace English with Sustainable Tucson. And as always, the city of Tucson is supporting our whole process. So another thing that some people don't often realize and don't know is that if every resident of Tucson spent just $5 a week on local food, that would generate $287 million in revenue. So my challenge to you is to think about how you eat and where you eat from, and whether or not you have a role to play in the Southern Arizona food system. Thank you. <laughs>